Hi, this is Chaplain John with Neighbors Care. Uh, welcome to the Neighbors Care uh, channel. We're glad you're here today. And uh, we are continuing in our series, uh, our value statement for Neighbors Care. Uh, what kind of values do the people of God have that love God and love their neighbors? What kind of values do we have that we show to other people and that we live? First of all, I'd like to uh, just let you know that our values here are all based from the Scripture. Um, the way we live our life should be by the Scripture. We want to live a kingdom life, don't we? Okay, so we're encouraging you to do that today. We're encouraging you to uh, maybe take part of what you're getting here or receiving here from us, and you're using also to uh, help in your relationship with God, to love God, Love God with all your heart, soul, strength, mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. That is the law. That's living kingdom life. And isn't that what we would like to do? So we've uh, talked about our mission statement a little bit, and we're right in the process of reviewing what our values are here at Neighbors Care. Our first was loving God and loving people very critical without that we can't go any further can we we find out what real love is agape love from god it's the kind of love that god has toward us and the kind of love that we are to have in response to love god and to love others love our neighbors even our enemies the second one is being available to god and to people um, nicodemus being like us um, even though he was a great ruler and um, of the people, and uh, he was a Pharisee, a uh, religious leader, no matter how he came to uh, Christ, he came to him because he wanted to make himself available to him. He knew that there was something missing in his life. Perhaps there's something missing in your life or mine today, but something missing in your life. And you know, I want to know more about God. I want to be available to him. I want to be available to the Holy Spirit when he speaks to me. Sometimes we're so busy, busy in our everyday life that we don't have time for God. It would be the same way again if we didn't have time for our spouse or our dear friends. What kind of relationship would we had, have? We wouldn't, would we? Okay. And then being available to people. You know, again, in our busy world, there's people that come our way that the Lord puts in our path. The Holy Spirit speaks to us. Go to this person, pray for this person, spend some time with this person, but we're just too busy. We don't make ourselves available to people. Well, Jesus showed us again in his example with his relationship with a woman at the well. She was a Sumerian, um, and um, the the Jews didn't like Sumerians, and the Sumerians didn't like the Jews very well either, as we know. Okay, but he made his, he went out of his way. He went to, to be, have some time, spend some time with a Samaritan woman. And we find out through the whole process of the, of the relationship building that Jesus did with this woman, that by the time the close of their conversation, she was won over and, and knew without a doubt that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. So it's important for us to make ourselves available to God and to be available to people. Sometimes we need to cut some things out of our busy schedule. Maybe we're just doing a lot of busy work, okay? Now the third value is let our yes be yes and our no be no. This is inspired by Matthew chapter 5 and it begins in verse 33. Jesus is speaking here, and he says again, You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, but I say to you, this is Jesus, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, nor it is God. Uh, for it is God's throne, nor from the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one white hair or gray or black. But 
Let your yes be yes and your no be no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. It's from the evil one if we say more than that. You see, why is that such an important value? I don't know about you, but I hear an awful lot of people tell me, hey, I'll call you, I'll call you, I'll, I'll come by, let's get together. We want to do this with you. Never hear from them again. Never. How many times do people tell you, um, you ask them a question and they say, hey, I, I didn't do that. I swear to God, I didn't do that. And you know they did. <laughs> it, that's from the evil one. Why would we have to add something to our yes or our no? If we are true children of God, we love God and we love people, why wouldn't we just say yes or no? Yes, I will. No, I won't. And do everything we possibly can, either to do what we're saying we'll do or not. Our word should be our bond. We don't need anything extra. This is very important in relationships. Let's say that you went to the doctor one day. Because we hear, don't we, that truth is relative today. But Jesus Christ says that's a bunch of baloney. If we went to the doctor one day, because we weren't feeling really so good, there, and we and we went to the doctor, and our doctor came out, he's all smiles, he's, how you doing today? And uh, by the way, did you pay your bill at the front desk before he came in? Did you give us your insurance information? After that, he, he, he examined you, and then, and then he came back out, and he said, everything looks good. Everything looks really good. You're in really good shape. You know, it's good to see you today. And just keep doing what you're doing and um, and you'll be fine. But in reality, you had cancer. But he didn't want to hurt your feelings because he liked you and you liked him. He liked seeing you because he likes getting your money and your insurance when you come to see him. So, But he told you that you're okay. But in reality, he didn't. And he kept telling you that for 10 years. 10 years went by, no treatment for the cancer because he hadn't even told you what's wrong yet. And then one day you find out that you have cancer. And you go to your doctor and you say, why didn't you just tell me the truth? And he said, I, di I didn't want to hurt your feelings. You know, sometimes you and I do that, don't we? We tell people things that we don't really mean. Because we don't want to hurt their feelings. But you know what? We go back to loving God and loving people. It's impossible to love someone and not tell them the truth. Let me say that again. It's impossible to love someone and not really tell them the truth. I mean, we can do that in a nice way. We can be gentle about it. We can take our time. We don't have to beat them up about the, the truth. The, the truth will do what it does. It's the truth. But we owe people that we love, and we owe it to ourselves to be truthful. I can't, I can't even begin to tell you that enough. That's why it's so important in the Bible. You see, the, the Pharisees that Jesus was talking about when he says, you've heard, He's talking about the officials, the Pharisees. You hear it from politicians. I swear to God, that's the truth. And they're lying. You know they're lying, and I know they're lying. But they tell us that. And actually, some people believe. Well, he told us the truth. No, he lied. We find out later, he lied to us. She lied to us. You know, it's just important to tell the truth. If we want to truly love God and love people, we have to tell the truth. We have to tell the truth to God because, honestly, he already knows what's going on in our head. He knows the words that come out of our mouth, even as they're being processed in our brain. Before they ever come out of our mouth, God knows what we're going to say. If we love someone, we must tell them the truth. 
We can do that in love. We can do that gently, just like Jesus said. Jesus didn't lie to us. He didn't say, if you follow me, everything's going to be hunky-dory. Everything's going to be wonderful. You know, you'll never get sick because you have this awesome power and you can overcome everything. The truth is, I'll tell you the truth here is, you and I and none of those people that were that were that were cured of any diseases by Jesus here on earth, none of them still left this place alive. In order for us to leave here, except for the, for the, uh, for the, uh, uh, <laughs> when, when Jesus comes back and, and we're raised up, none of us will leave here alive. That's how we leave here. Okay. We must die first. But it's not the first death, he says, that you need to be afraid of. It's the second one. He tells us the truth. And, he, and then he adds to that. And by the way, <laughs> by the way, while you're here on this earth, while you're still here, because you're still in this world, no longer of this world, but you're still in this world. He tells us the truth that you will have trouble. You're going to have problems. I had problems when I was here. He tells us I had problems. Look at my life. Especially if you follow me, you're going to have trouble. But then he says, but be of good cheer. I'm telling you these things. I'm telling you the truth so that in your heart you'll have peace. And he said, the truth is, in this world you'll have trouble. But be of good cheer. Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Isn't that great news? I've overcome the world. There's the truth. You're going to have trouble. But, he, but he wants, he's telling you you're going to have trouble. I'm telling you you're going to have trouble. But I'm telling you this so that you'll have peace. I'm telling you the truth because Jesus Christ has overcome this world. And one day, one day, by and by, it's going to be all right. One day, we will have the most amazing life with Jesus Christ on earth. And even on this earth, we can have peace knowing that why? Because Jesus told us the truth. He let his yes be yes and his no be no. Let's imitate him today. Let's imitate him, you and I. Let's be truthful with each other. Let's be truthful with our family members. Let's be truthful with people out in the world even. Let's, let's be truthful with people so that people will say, well, there's one thing I know about that person that follows Jesus Christ. He's going to he or she's going to tell you the truth. They might do it gently. <laughs> you might hardly even know it, but they're going to tell you the truth. Maybe there's somebody we need to share the truth with today. We need to be honest with. There's someone that we need to share our yes or our no. Yes or no. It's that simple, isn't it? And then do it. Do our very utmost to do it. I'm going to say yes to you. I'm going to make a promise to you. I'm going to keep trying to do this. I'm going to keep trying to share with you the values of neighbor's care, the values of Christ, the values of love. I'm going to try to do my best to do that with you every single day that I can. I'm going to miss some days. I'm going to tell you that right off the bat. I'm going to miss some days, but I'm going to do my best to keep doing that because I have a life too, and I have troubles in my life. I have issues in my life. And sometimes I fight discouragement just like you may. I do. So pray for me today. Okay? Pray for me today. God bless you. I love you. And I will see you uh, hopefully tomorrow. <laughs> God bless you. And um, know that God loves you more than anything or anything. He loves you so much today. He loves you and I. And uh, so love God, love your neighbor, and we'll see you tomorrow. You take care. Thank you for joining us today. God bless. Bye-bye.